Well, this bloke here hardly needs an introduction. Of course, it's Rocket Rod. Now, you would have seen him on many of the Ford of Action episodes. And this week, we're gonna have a good run through his beast of a 79 series, exactly what you've done to it, why you've done it. And I just wanna go through nut and bolt, mate, on this thing, because I, I sit next to you in the convoy, mate. I can hear this thing purring away, and I think that all our audience wanna know exactly what you've done to this absolute beast of a rig. Well, we've sat around the campfire a few times and we've actually turned around and explained to each other all the little tricks that we do to all the different cars. Never turned around and actually told the, you know, the folk at home. Exactly right, mate. So let's start with it. It's obviously a 79 series. I know that yep. much, mate. What year? Uh, 2013. Yep. And um, I originally got it to develop the automatic transmission. A lot of people ask me why 79 series. Yep. But from my point of view, we actually got this to develop the automatic transmission many, many years ago. Yep. And um, you know, she's been around Australia three times now and now she has a whole story to tell. Probably spent more time on three wheels than four. <laughs> yeah, a lot. <laughs> well, he's not afraid to punt up the odd hard track or two. That's an understatement if I've ever heard one. I reckon it's time we go up and have a closer look and find out exactly what makes this thing tick. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. Let's go. All right, we'll start up front. Obviously, the bull bar. This is actually a brand new bull bar, a new style. This is actually a Toro bar from Off-Road Animal. And um, I love the style. Uh, I've known Dave for a long, long time there and that. He's done me a lot of favors and that. And he wanted to design the bar. He actually designed this bar based around this car. So he actually borrowed the 79 and he did it. And he was sending me all sorts of photos as he was going. And I actually fell in love with the bar, very much so. So much so that before he even finished the bar and was about to zinc coat it and coat it for weatherproofing, I actually turned around and asked him to stop and clear coated it. I actually wanted, I loved the forged look, the edge forward look. I wanted to see all the workmanship and how they actually done the whole bar. And um, I fell in love with it the moment that I saw it. Obviously on top of that is my trusty light bars. I've had my light bars for years. Um, I tend to prefer light bars over the round ones if you wish. I have a general fear of uh, hitting kangaroos on the road, so much so that I actually didn't go out and venture out too much at night. I actually want to see what's on the side of the road, what's in the paddocks and that. And so much so, I actually double stacked, so I actually have one on top of the two. We actually made the brackets for them and that. And then Off-Road Animal actually put a third one in for me, down here. It works great, they're actually brilliant. So bright, lights up the whole sky and that brilliantly. Obviously, with the new bar, flip number plate, so me, me nice winch, I've actually got a, um, King's Dominator winch in behind it, and I've been using those for years and years and years. Trusty winch, I've actually, I love them. I actually don't mount the control box on the front because of my light bars. I've got nowhere to mount the control box, so I actually mount it underneath the bonnet nap, and I actually prefer the remote. Obviously, the UHF aerial, I actually like the little thin whip, and I do it for a couple of reasons. One, when I'm looking at the windscreen, I don't want a great big black aerial sitting there. I like something that's really thin, it disappears out of view. I never notice this at all when I'm actually looking out the front. With the GME radio, I actually don't have any of the controls on the handle. Um, <laughs> I'm very close sighted, so I actually struggle to read a book or read what's on there. So I've actually, I have my radio at arm reach as far as I can, just so I can see the numbers and make the adjustments, which is all up in the roof console. I've always had a love for aluminium wheels, all right, always. And I've actually gone for a 17 inch Dick CP wheel and um, they're actually, they're, uh, uh, the, the type is actually Torque, that's what they're branded. They've been on there ever since I've actually owned the car, six years now Annette. My newfound love is my Yokohama tyres, love them to death. I cannot say enough about these tyres and I've been to the Cape York, I've been back, we've done a few trips, done several um, episodes now and I'm still yet to puncture a single tyre, I'm still yet to pull it off of the bead, right? These ones I've got on now are the new ones, these are the um, XMTs and they're really aggressive mud tyres. We ended up with a, a two inch lift, it's a 3.9 GVM upgrade. I needed it quite specifically because I knew the amount of weight I was actually going to put on the back. I knew it was going to be very, very rear end heavy. So that's basically the suspension. I didn't go too nuts with it. That's my wheels, my tyres. Move on to the brakes. Yeah, I don't believe you need to spend an awful lot of money on, on rotors. The basic slotted ones do just fine. My brake calipers are absolutely standard. There's nothing special in there. My, um, even the brake pads. I actually run the genuine Toyota brake pads and that. I believe in them quite a lot. Heavy vehicle, takes a lot to pull her up all the time. Um, I do actually have braided uh, brake lines. 
Um, on this car there's actually uh, seven of them and we did that originally because I actually put a double diaphragm brake booster in this car and it had so much brake force on that that we didn't want the rubber to actually um, balloon out when we were actually um, pumping the brakes really, really hard. So the braided lines went a long way in doing that as well. Um, and the double diaphragm brake booster and that made a big difference. It takes away the solid brake feel. It's really, really hard. Now it gives you a nice softer one as, as we go. And that's the only mods I've really done. The, the brake lines and the brake booster are probably the two biggest things I've actually done with this. Over a period of time, I actually found out my axles and the CVs are actually pretty strong and I was braking an awful lot of these. So now I actually turn around and I put a set of uh, chrome molly internals into a standard hub and um, I haven't, I've never broken one since. The rear of these cars is 50 mil thinner on each side than it is the front. So all, overall, you're 100 mil thinner in the back than what you are in the front. And if you're in soft sand or in you know, heavy bog areas and that, the fact is, is that your back wheels aren't following the front ones. All four wheels are actually trying to push a track through the soft sand. And it just, the workload in, in, in doing that is actually quite a, quite a lot. Got me long axles, all the standard brakes and everything went straight back on it. And you can actually tell by them, because they're a full floating axle, which means they're splined at both ends. So there's none of this snapping the flanges off the end and that. That was one of the best things I actually ever did. I still kept the leaf springs. Um, I did it because of all the weight in the back. I do a lot of extreme off-roading and I was really, really worried that if I got it up onto one corner, like all my weight onto one corner, which I do do quite a lot, you know, I'm either on two wheels or I'm up on one wheel sometimes. I was really, really worried that if I had a coil spring in the back that it might collapse on that corner. So I actually stayed with the big pack 3.9 tonne and I've never had a problem. Let's check out what's inside the canopy, hey? Now this whole canopy is actually an MFI canopy. It's a steel canopy, they actually did all the drawers and everything for me. It's actually had a really, really hard life. I've leaned it up against trees, embankments, got things stuck on branches, the whole lot. And you know what? I've never had a big influx of dust inside the back, and we do some of the toughest roads with all the dust and everything. And I always open it up, she's always spotless, always clean. I've also been in deep river crossings that have been higher, probably up here, almost level with the door, top of the door, and still. You always get a couple of little drops, but never, I've never actually flooded out, I've never had dust everywhere. Now this is obviously on the, what we call the passenger side of the vehicle, which is the gutter side. So when you pull up and that, um, at a gutter and you want to get to your fridge or get to your stove or anything like that. I'm always on the safety side, I'm always on the gutter side of the road. So I put my whole kitchen on this side. Um, I've got me three drawers and with me, the reason I've got them all segregated out, I've got my pantry on this side, which will keep all my food and everything and it's actually packed at the moment because we are actually on a trip while we're filming this. Now, besides the pantry on the inside, all my kitchen utensils, plates, cleaning, my trusty, you know, <coughs> Um, kettle, the whole lot, so I keep all that there. All my spare parts for the whole vehicle go in this one, it's obviously the heaviest part of the whole car. And I take all the hubs, the bearings, spare fan belts, I've got tyre plugs, I've got um, radiator, hose, the kitchen. So I've got my uh, Travel Buddy pie warmer, this is actually the largest size one. Well I actually have a hot water service in here. Now I did that for the longest trips. I've even got where the exhaust comes out the top, we've even built the stainless steel um, piece above it so all the heat goes up and gets exhausted out so it gets to cool down before it affects anything else in the cabin. I've even turned around and I've got an aluminium sheet in above it so it protects everything that's above it as well. So we've never got any problem with heat. Both that, and the, so the two hot things in here, both the, the uh, hot water service and the oven are both in the same spot and this is the area that I've dedicated and made even the wiring and everything has been modified in such a way that I can put all the heat in one spot here. I carry a portable cooktop stove, which obviously on the end of my pantry, I can pull my pantry out, but then I can also pull out my shelf. One of the best things I did, put the strip lighting on. The most important thing is that when I had it here, I found I was casting shadows, and if I had it here, I was casting shadows. So I actually put two sets of LEDs on top so I could turn around and actually see everything. I carry a, a fire extinguisher. This one's a little bit bigger than normal. This is actually a three kilo one. So I've got my water pump. So from here, I've actually got my water, so I can actually turn my water pump on. And just behind, I've got my tap, I've got running water. So if I turn the pump, pump off, and I actually just use the pump as a backup, just in case, and I have had it before, 
where the pump sort of jams and it just keeps on running and running and running and that and overheats itself. So I actually turned it around and actually put a switch in. On the back, I've got my Yokohamas again. I always carry two spares and you'll find that both these spares are absolutely pristine. Never once have I ever had to put a, a spare on this vehicle. So it's a testament to how good these tyres and how good uh, I believe in them. Underneath, I've got my rear draw. And in my rear draw, I keep things like uh, my shovel, I keep all my uh, trailer plugs and everything. I actually keep all my window stays for the rooftop tent. And I actually, talking about that, I love my rooftop tents. In my entire history of camping, of all the decades that I've been alive, I have never ever, still to this day, slept in a swag. I love rooftop tents. You will not get me in a swag unless I'm kicking and screaming all the way. All right. um, the King's one, I've had it on several trips. Um, value for money is second to none. There is just no way that anything else can compare to that. They're comfortable, they're easy, easy to erect. Well, I can do these blunt finded. I'm so used to doing these. Um, this one comes off the back, the ladder comes down here, which is why normally I have all, me, all the accessories to go with the, the rooftop tent. Even me, me trusty King's mat, goes right there because that's exactly where the ladder goes okay um, underneath the bottom we talked about the water capacity before and the water i've actually got 60 litre tank which is just forward of that drawer now i've got the kitchen on the other side and on this side is what i call my traditional ute side i used to have a crane in here since i took out the crane the camera crew have seen it as an optional storage device right <laughs> So there's a lot of room. I've even got so much room that I even have my storage devices down there, which normally I'll put spare winch ropes in, um, some more pegs, hammers. I even put different tongues. So I've got a recovery tongue on at the moment, but I normally store my uh, tow tongues when I'm actually towing a caravan or something. They all go in there. I've got two fuel tanks. Um, I've actually got the standard 130 litre tank in the back, and that suits me fine. I didn't want to put a auxiliary tank at the back. I do have an auxiliary tank, but the auxiliary tank I have is actually forward of the rear axle. I have enough weight at the back. I didn't want to add to it by putting a um, high volume rear tank at the back. So I left the factory one at the back and that suits me fine. I put an extra 90 litre one, which is forward of the axle. So I'm carrying that 220 litres. I actually use my forward tank as a ballast. So I'll actually run my rear tank down to about a quarter just to get some weight off, and I'll actually run my front tank completely full because it lowers my center of gravity and I have it all forward of the diff. Now this whole electrical system here was all done by Piranha. I actually have a provision for a solar, I can actually stick a solar panel on the back and use it to charge my auxiliary battery. All right, up front, obviously, we get to my clear view mirrors. Um, I love these mirrors, they do everything. If you've never seen these mirrors, I gotta tell you, they're brilliant, they can extend. The reason why I like these mirrors, besides the size, is obviously with all the driving we do, if I hit a branch, they just pop in. The best part about it, and I discovered this by accident, and you've gotta force yourself past a tree, the mirrors actually go the other way. Very few people actually know that the mirrors will go both ways, right? And they always come back to the same latching point. Mine have actually got indicators on the, on the outside. There you go. So they're all wired in on mine. And um, the, the new ones that they got, I've actually got all the, the folding, automatic folding ones. I've ordered them, they'll be here shortly. My snorkel is the next thing. This is a uh, safari snorkel. This is actually a big four inch. It's actually also very good for pushing branches off the side of the car. That and the mirror tends to keep a lot of the branches off, I've learned. <laughs> they work extremely well. Obviously we move into the interior of the car. So we talk about the center console. Now, this one's an automatic transmission, which was why this whole car came about. We bought the car to turn around and see if we could uh, you know, change it from a manual to an automatic. It had never been done before. So now we run the to uh, Toyota 200 series six-speed auto, and we use the Prado 150 Tiptronic T-Bar, and that's because they, they fitted well. The 200 series has the old style of lever and gate, and we didn't want to cut a bit of hole on the floor. We wanted to build our own console, which is what you see here and we wanted to use uh, a T-bar system. It was still Toyota. We wanted to keep the whole theme Toyota. So the transmission, brand new Toyota. The coolers are Toyota, the T-bar's Toyota, bell housing, the drive plate, everything's Toyota themed. 
Now, obviously, there was no console for the 79 series. There were no automatic electronics for the 79 series. And this is where HDM Electronics come into it. They helped us out and they designed a full set of electronics and our engineers at work at Wholesale Automatics, we turned around and we spent the time and we actually managed to turn around and get the, so the six speed auto out of the 200 series drives independently to the engine. That means it's a standalone system and it drives like a limousine. We've got it so you, know, you can put it into manual mode or tiptronic mode if you want and it actually drives as a full manual. I can make it take off in any gear I want, I can down change as much as I want, doesn't matter what speed you we can have Top Gear come on at 70 k's an hour, we can have Lock Up come on at any speed, infinite speed, we can do anything we want. So this was all built in. So we turn around, it tells you what gear you're in, both in drive or whether you're in manual mode, you've got trans temp, you've got battery voltage, you've got how much throttle you're using. Obviously I've got a um, Department of Interior roof console, which is what my UHF is in on the top. I've actually taken my centre mirror out, there's no use having it because it's a canopy, no way of looking through the back mirror anyway. All right, now obviously I've got a few upgrades under here. Obviously the most obvious one is the dual battery systems. I keep both the batteries up the front. So we've got the battery, which is a standard battery for the car. We've got the, uh, the auxiliary battery, which runs all the back. We keep them independent from each other. My air box. Now this is the only part on the whole car where I actually have the word patrol written on it. <laughs> And this is because Patrol Doctor actually made me this air box for it. And also, this is actually a shore seal system. So there's no way known that this is actually gonna leak, all right? So this has been a great thing. And on one of the biggest things I noticed when I put this on, along with the air snorkel, the, uh, the air induction noise in the engine just went dead silent. It just take all, took all the sucking away. It actually worked really, really well. Once again, we're talking about the winch before. This is actually my control box in here. That's the double Dauerfan brake booster that we spoke about before. We've got the big oil cooler in here. Now once again, this is actually a genuine oil cooler and the most important thing with any automatic, whether it's got anything to do with the 79 series or you've got a trader ute and everything like that, it's most important to have an oil cooler and a big one. This is actually a large 100 series oil cooler out of a turbo diesel and it's a really big cooler. It's really, really deep and goes through. She puts out 215 kilowatts at the rear wheels. The automatic with the torque converter just allows the, the turbo to come on full boost before I've even moved a millimetre. So you actually feel like you've got 250, 280 kilowatts. But 215, it keeps everything safe. That's it. That's the whole story. And that's my 79 series. Oh mate, that was a very comprehensive look at your 79 series. And I've got to say that your 79 series has to be the most used 79 series in Australia. It's done more hard, hard tracks than I think any other 79 series. And it's still in one piece, which is quite surprising. Well, it is mate. very surprising, I tell you that. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Like always, make sure you um, turn your notifications on and subscribe to our channel if you want to see great content like this. And Rocket Rod, if you've got any questions, we'll be going through all the questions that you guys might have and answer anything that you might have about his 79 series, about auto upgrades in general. As you know, Rocket Rod is the auto expert. He's the guy who's been doing all the auto conversions, not just in 79s, but just about every single vehicle, including the Dirty 30, mate. So if there's a question about autos, this is your man right here. So thanks again for watching, and mate, we better go to that campsite. What do you reckon? We better get cracking. Nearly beer o'clock. <laughs>